Devin, uh, Devin Bray, I'm from Connecticut. Uh, I've been involved in Occupy Hartford, and I happen to be in the city for a few hours today. I have a spare time, so I wanted to come down and support what's going on here. I figured I'd do some donations and uh, just kind of see what's going on and get an idea of what, you know, what's, what this is about. And, uh, and you know, I, I definitely support what I'm seeing here. I'm really uh, glad this is going on. Uh, it's a lot more organized here than it is in Hartford right now. But, uh, you know, I think this is a good, a good cause. I don't know if necessarily, uh, I mean, you know, everybody here agrees on the solution to the problem, but the problem at least we agree on, and I think it's good that we're getting people aware of what the, what the problem is. Which, you know, right now, uh, definitely we have, we have a crisis in our economy, and it's definitely, it's, it's not as simple as what a lot of people in the government and the media are trying to put it out to be. It's, it's not, you know, it's not just a, it's not just a quick little thing we got to fix with some proper, you know, throwing around stimulus money the right way. I mean, I think there's some innate problems with the system that we have, our, our, our actual economic system, and it's probably only going to get a lot worse. So, you know, the, the fact that, the fact that even though most of the country is doing really badly right now, and that others are somehow actually doing better than they ever have before at the same time, there's something, there's a paradox there. We're told that the better that we're told the better the corporations are doing, the better that the wealthy are doing, the better we're all going to do, the more jobs they're going to have. You know, the more we cut their taxes, the more we give the top 1% what it is they want, it'll all somehow come back down to us. And it's not really, it's not happening that way. It's, it's actually quite the opposite, it appears. So, you know, they have, they have, uh, they have some of the, the least regulations, the lowest taxes uh, that have, take, have taken place historically in this country. And yet, unemployment is at its highest rate. Wealth distribution is the worst it's ever been, and uh, you know, the economy is suffering. So something's not working the way it's supposed to. <laughs> so it's good people start realizing this, and uh, it's not going to be solved just by cutting taxes on on, uh, on the wealthy. Right. So what would you say is the central, I guess, theme or idea uh, yeah. cause? The central cause is that we want an economic an economic system that is fair, in which uh, you know, everybody has the ability, if they work hard, to be a middle-class citizen. Uh, that basically, that uh, we have economic justice, whatever it takes. And I think people have the right to be able to get to be able to get money and to work hard to get rich. But there's a point where you need to have balance. And I think right now we want, we just want the, we just want the country to get back into balance again. So is there a first step or like, is there an action we, the government could take that would right. make you significantly happier with the current situation? I mean, yeah, not, there's not, definitely yeah. several things I can think of that would help. Um, well, one thing I think is that we need to find a way to get money out of politics. That's one major problem. Because right now, the average person has too little influence on politics compared to the, compared to the wealthiest people. The, I mean, it's, always, it's never been equal, you know. A random guy you find on the street is never going to have as much influence as a, as a multi-millionaire. But it would be nice if we get that influence a little more balanced, where you know an average person has a, a little more power. You know, um, where lobbyists aren't really running the government. That's one thing. It, it needs some serious reform to lobbying laws, um, campaign financing laws, and not just the thing, not just talking about it, but actually doing it. Right. There's a lot of talk about it. Nothing's really happened. Um, financial regulation, like the Frank Dodd bill, was not adequate. It was watered down beyond belief. And that's one of the core roots of the economic crisis we're having right now is the core regulation. So that, that needs to be, that, that law not only needs to be enforced, because they're not even enforcing it right now. They've only written like 30, 40 out of the 400 regulations. They need to strengthen it and then get it into action immediately. Um, you know, having banks that can't fail is a major problem. That has to be, that has to, got to be changed. Uh, these are all examples. I mean, I can go on and on, but there's something that would allow uh, basically a greater, stronger, uh, anything that would strengthen democracy. In other words, um, one thing I can think of is like runoff voting, where you can actually vote for more than one in candidate at a time. You don't have to throw your vote at the lesser of two evils. You can say you can give your first, second, third choice. That would strengthen third party candidates enormously. It's like that in many countries. It's like that actually in Alaska, in fact. And it, it really would allow it would really help take the stranglehold that the two-party system has over us as well. So there's many, many things the government can do. Um, and whether they'll much, do it, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and how much immediate change do you think it will take to get, I guess, everyone in this part to leave? 
Well, what would it take to get people to leave? Oh, that's a good question. That is a really good question. I mean, I mean yeah, these are all, you know, uh, good ideas, ideas in order yeah. to reform, but... How are you going to get these people to be happy, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Because obviously we're not going to reach the, the most ideal system yeah, that we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, right. I think, I think some political candidates would really have to take up the cause of what people here are looking for. I think that's one thing. And then we'd have to feel like, you know, that there's someone actually representing us in the government. Um, that's one thing, but I don't know how long that would take. And I don't think it's going to happen immediately. I think these problems have built up over a long time, so the solutions are going to take some time. So, you know, me being in, as long as the momentum keeps going the way it is, you know, this movement could continue to grow for years. Uh, and it may take that long before people are, realize that there's real, there's been real changes. I don't think it's going to be any quick fix where everybody here is going to be happy and want to go home. It's not going to happen in a week or in a month. Right? It's going to take probably years, at the very least. So, uh, we'll see. Hopefully yep. something comes out of it.